I'm Jim Wofford. I'm a local resident here, Upperville, Virginia. I'm standing today at Great Meadows, the site of the World Equestrian Games final workout for the team that will go to Normandy, France and represent the U.S. Okay, Jim, and this is, these are questions that we typically ask everyone across the state. Right. So what is your family history, as detailed as, as you want to be? I was, I was born and raised in the horse business. My father was in the cavalry uh, and stayed in the cavalry all of his life. He was an Olympic athlete. Both of my brothers were on the Olympic team. One sister-in-law and myself. So it's a family tradition to be involved with horses and, and to be in, involved with the Olympic tradition. So did you, uh, did your, you, did you win medals? I did. I, I won every medal except the individual gold over a 20-year career. So what are some of the Olympics you competed in? My first Olympics was 1968, Mexico City. And then my uh, last Olympics was 1984. I was the reserve in Los Angeles. What is your fondest memories uh, of the Olympics? Uh, fondest memories of the Olympics are always when they play the national anthem. <laughs> is there any Olympics that you remember in particular that was different than the others? or? They're, they're all different because of the location, the time of year that they take place, the, uh, the conditions at the particular venue that you use. Uh, but the, the Olympics aren't something that you forget. You remember all of them. So can you describe uh, geographically for people this region of Virginia, where it is geographically, and then kind of describe the culture of this area here? This area that we're in today is called the Northern Piedmont. And it's an area that, that is outside of Washington, D.C. and goes out to the uh, extremities of the Blue Ridge. This, for some reason, has always historically held horses, this area. When Lord Fairfax hunted his foxhounds and George Washington, as a young 16-year-old man, rode with him, they galloped over the ground that you can see behind me. The Civil War cavalry battles took place up and down these roads. They, they galloped over these hills, they went up and down what were then dirt roads, uh, and this, this area would have been full of men and horses during the Civil War. Fast forward to the 20th century and this became a mecca for horse sports. They, here they steeplechase, they play polo, they drive carriages. They have Western Pleasure Western horses. They have competition horses. All three of the, the Olympic disciplines are featured around here. You have Olympic medalists in all of the disciplines that live within a 20 mile radius of where I'm standing right now. This, this part of Virginia has, since, since we came to Jamestown, has had horses around here. So you don't think it's completely by chance that the, the historical aspect of Civil War horses riding around here, George Washington riding around here, and all the way back then, this land is still used, in an essence changed, but it's still used uh, for the, sa the same reason, right? The same purpose. The, the first use of this land for, for sporting pleasure was fox hunting, and right here today, there, there are seven to 10 fox hunts in this area that people still get dressed up in the pink coats uh, and go out and follow hounds across country just the same way George Washington did. How would you describe this area to someone who's never been here before? Uh, I would describe this area here as a little slice of heaven, especially if you love horses. I wasn't born here, but I got here as quick as I could. So the Northern Piedmont, what do people do around here typically? What's the uh, industry here? The, the major industry out here is agrarian, some kind of horses. There are some cattle farms, mostly horses, uh, thoroughbred breeding for racing, and then a great deal of sport horse activity, as, as I've already mentioned, of, of every type. Uh, Western, racing, steeplechasing, point to pointing, fox hunting, the three Olympic disciplines, dressage, show jumping, and eventing. They all take place out here because for some reason, this area is eminently suitable for horses. Now, you um, you said your father was in the cavalry. I don't think people uh, think about the cavalry in the 20th century, so did he see any action or do you know 
fortunately for me, my father was in the cavalry between the wars. He graduated from West Point in 1920. Uh, and when war broke out in 1941, he failed his combat physical because he had tuberculosis. And then I came along after that. So I've often thought, uh, I know that he felt uh, in a funny sort of way cheated to have missed the war. But I'm kind of glad he did because I came along a couple of years later. And I might not have come along if he'd gone into Normandy Beach uh, with the 1st Infantry Division. You know, a yeah. different world for me. Did they have horses in D-Day? I didn't think about that. They did. The, the Allied forces did not have horses. The German forces were still surprisingly uh, horse equipped. A lot of their artillery, even on into 1944, was horse drawn. If one of the reasons that Hitler did not invade England is that they could not figure out a way to get 125 horses shipped to England. Okay. All right. Oh, no problem. So he needs the harassment. <laughs> um, the, the Allied forces, <clears throat> the Allied forces did not have horses with them when they went in on Normandy Beach. The German forces still were surprisingly horse, horse drawn. A lot of their artillery was horse drawn. Uh, they still had a lot of mounted units, even though we think of the Wehrmacht as uh, being highly mobile and highly mechanized. One of the reasons Hitler did not invade England is because he would have had to find a way to get 125,000 horses to England to support the troops that he planned to, to take during Operation Sealand.